Before the release and worldwide box office success of Jurassic World in 2015, the original Jurassic Park 4 was in development hell for 14 years. A much darker, disturbing and nightmarish entry into the series, which could have completely changed the landscape and future of Jurassic World as we know it. And you might be asking yourself, well what did actually become of this original Jurassic Park 4? So let me explain from the beginning. Spielberg's original Jurassic Park got the franchise off to a strong start and is regarded as an all-time classic and even held the title of the highest highest grossing movie of all time until it was surpassed by James Cameron's Titanic in 1998, but later installments have failed to return to that high mark. Spielberg initiated planning for Jurassic Park 4 in 2002, keeping Joe Johnston, believe it or not, as director despite the financial letdown of Jurassic Park 3. As the years dragged on, however, after these words, it was never once apparent that Jurassic Park 4 would evolve into the smash hit Jurassic World. Instead, it amounted a legacy of its own, being far darker, scarier and more nightmarish than its original Jurassic Park counterparts. Under the guidance of Spielberg and Johnston, who still guided the sequel after never actually settling to direct it, screenwriter William Monhan was the first scribe to officially board the long gestating project. Reportedly, the script would have brought back Sam Neill as Alan Grant, and Jeff Goldblum as Ian Malcolm, who were brought in to stop the new breeding dinosaurs from continuing to spread to new areas. Even so, Neil Goldblum and Richard Attenborough were all expected to reprise their roles, along with Kira Knightley as John Hammond's granddaughter. There's not actually much word on what the final script entailed, except that it included velociraptors, no T-Rex, and some vague biological relationship between humans and dinosaurs, which is a huge part of the video we talk about later on. And in 2004, the script remained in Amblin's hands, ready for other writers to revise. At this point Spielberg's in various script writers and marks an infamous period in the script's development as an early draft was leaked and was met with the internet's predictable laughter and cured it is. This early script can be summed up in a nutshell as being all too simple and a massive change of pace for the series. Essentially it jettisons the locations and characters from the original films but retains John Hammond who enlists an ex-navy seal named Harris to retrieve the DNA samples that were stolen by Dennis Nedry in the original Jurassic Park. Hammond's objective is to create infertile dinosaurs to destroy the surviving creatures of Isla Nublar, who have migrated to the North American mainland. In a nutshell, this just doesn't make sense. Why would you create other dinosaurs to destroy other dinosaurs? It's just a terrible script at this stage. Sounds simple enough, right? But the script takes an even more bizarre turn in its second act. Harris is captured by the new Swiss owners of Isla Nublar and taken to a medieval castle in the Swiss Alps, where it is discovered that a holding company is working on genetic genetically modified dinosaurs, specifically the Dilophosaurus and Deinonychus, the company enlists Harris to train the dinosaurs in a multitude of insane tasks, controlling them through radio frequencies and routine injections of adrenaline and serotonin. Now you can pick out some themes and elements there which relates to Owen Grady and the Raptor Pack, so it's obviously a sense evolved parts of that into Jurassic World, but this is nothing yet compared to what we're going to get into later. But where does all this darker, mysterious and human hybrid dinosaurs come into play? So let me continue to explain. In early 2004, before Salis was on the project, a draft was being doctored that allegedly included dinosaurs trained as super soldiers, while the series technical advisor Jack Horner claimed that the Mohanan script laid out an evolutionary connection between human and dinosaurs, hinting that a dino-human hybrid could be the grand payoff for this idea. In any case, regardless where that concept came from, is this vision which lives on in the minds of so many people and Jurassic fans. The dinosaur hybrids in this script are fused with human DNA and dog DNA to ensure a perfect balance of fierceness, intelligence and obedience, combined with strength and speed. Soldier Harris is commanded by the Swiss to train these hybrids for rescue missions and also to assassinate drug dealers. On top of their weaponized teeth and claws, the dinosaurs are even given armored suits to wear in their missions, which entails fighting both terrorists and drug lords. Now obviously to a Jurassic fan this is a far out concept with dinosaurs taking on drug lords and war and everything else in between. And this is only the start. As more wildly circulated than the script itself, there's some official artwork that leaked in 2012. Although Sales himself confirmed his leaked scripts are genuine, concept art later provided that the hybrid idea was actually under serious consideration and not merely the product of an unpolished second draft. A further concept image released in 2016 depicted a green hybrid named Raptor Man, who sported 
spotted an arm cannon. At some point, this was a very real idea and seriously considered for Jurassic Park 4 as they were going ahead with production. While Spielberg initially considered Jurassic Park 4 to be the mother of all ideas, special effects head Stan Winston explained that Spielberg had since stalled the project after constant rewrites had failed to master a usable story or an adequate blend of science fiction and adventure. By 2006, Joe Johnston himself had taken a crack at the script, but this saw little substantial development. From 2006 for the next four years, things only got worse and worse. While some of the original cast remained optimistic to return, the failing health meant that Attenborough could never again reprise his role as John Hammond, and the death of the creator, Michael Crichton, signaled to Kennedy that it was maybe time to finally close this book on the series. In 2010, Joe Johnston remained optimistic that both he and Spielberg would commence work on it by late 2011, but Johnston mysteriously dropped off from the project after his completion of Captain America the First Avenger. But Spielberg did indeed persevere with the franchise, as in 2011, Spielberg confirmed that Jurassic Park 4 was back on track, with this iteration of the production eventually morphing into Colin Trevorrow's 2015 film Jurassic World. Colin Trevorrow and co-writer Derek Connolly decided to completely revamp the script. The realisation of the theme park, raptors trained by a human, a dinosaur on the loose, Navarro claims to have overhauled much of the script he inherited. Despite that, there are several familiar aspects to his story that would seemingly indicate the survival of the original Jurassic Park 4 concept and ideas. As Jurassic World recalls both Monahan's Velociraptors and Sile's idea of genetic modification. Sile's hybrid, the Indominus Rex, is also a genetic combination, though not quite as interesting, of a Velociraptor and a T-Rex. As it was Spielberg's idea, the raptor tamer concept unsurprisingly survives in Jurassic World, though this time it's without the aid of drug dealers or any kind of signal like that. It's unclear how Sale's mercenary protagonist Harris was characterised, but Chris Pratt's Owen Grady suspiciously shares Harris's military background. Additionally, the goal of Vic Hoskins takes a page from Monhan's super soldier idea as he sees the Velociraptors as prime candidates for a military objective. Finally, the adventure in Jurassic World regards the rescue of children. Silas's idea of a rescue mission involving terrorists, dinosaur hybrids, and a ten-year-old girl was no doubt too out there for Trevorrow, but both versions continue the trend of including juvenile main characters. And even more so than that, some of the ideas actually made it into the 2018 film Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, as Owen Grady ends up investigating a lavish mansion that bears a sneaky resemblance to the script's secret castle layer. And more leaked material from the early 2000s suggests that Jurassic Park 4 might have introduced a new species even crazier than dog spliced dinosaurs, courtesy of contract artist Carlos Hunt depiction of what's now known amongst fans as Raptor Man, something we touched on earlier. A bipedal, scaly, green-skinned humanoid hybrid soldier whose go-to firearm was fused directly into its arm. Kinda like Barrett from Final Fantasy VII, no one from the Unmade Films creative team has ever confirmed whether the Raptor Man illustrations actually depicts the hybrid dinosaurs that Salus had in mind for the script, but Salus himself would eventually confirm that the script itself was real. There's also evidence to suggest that Jurassic Park 4 was actually actually be in film. And take a look at this. In 2011, Theme Park Adventure magazine uploaded a picture on Twitter showing the daily shooting schedule at Universal Studios. It shows that on the day of the shoots for Jurassic Park 4 were made at this stage. After this picture was uploaded, there was an avalanche of tweets and postings on other Theme Park and Jurassic Park fan sites that this was indeed real. Some other people went to the studios and confirmed that the board was real. However, Universal had always denied that Jurassic Park 4 was never in production. However, TPA Magazine did note that at the Falls Lake area, which was used for the previous Jurassic Park films, a huge blue screen set was being used. Their tour guide also stated that it was being used for a top secret huge blockbuster. Maybe Universal just wants to completely wipe their hands and deny this ever existed. And let's not forget, they did use original concept works and arts at Universal Studios Orlando in one of the Halloween Horror Night scare mazes. It featured some of the human dinosaur hybrids we'd kinda seen warped in some twisted way and was used as a scare maze to scare people going through it. I personally would have loved to visit this, so if any of you guys actually watching this video did manage to visit this attraction, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know your thoughts. Even though Jurassic Park 4 never legitimately made it to our screens, some parts of it still live on in Jurassic World, as we said, but it inspired so many others, such as the Scorpius Rex in Camp Cretaceous. You can see the original similarities from the concept art in this picture to what the Scorpius Rex looks now, clearly inspired 
inspired by the original dark, twisted designs of Jurassic Park 4. Part of this movie's cancellation could have also been that a lot of people believe it doesn't fit with the franchise, but I'm inclined to actually disagree with that and say it does actually fit with the franchise because the entire message behind the book is about genetic technology. Jurassic Park's message is not dependent on dinosaurs, that's the vessel Michael Crichton chose to convey his message. This would be a very logical continuation of that message in my opinion, as the original message from Michael Crichton was always about the technology and the gene and the man play God kind of scenario. The dinosaurs were just a byproduct of that. But one could also argue that that's not the next step of the concept for two simple reasons. The story of the franchise is constantly asking the question about what the creatures really are, dinosaurs or monsters. If they took this route then the answer would be obvious. And number two, if we simplify the concept, it's just about dinosaurs interacting with humans in the modern world. That's it. You change too much of that and it starts to feel like a completely different franchise. Not only would it not look like Jurassic Park, but the tone would be completely different based on how ridiculous the idea really is. Additionally, Jurassic World creator and co-writer Colin Trevorrow confessed to having read the original script in 2015 with Screen Crush and made no effort to hide his admiration for the entire thing, saying, honestly man, I like it in a lot of ways. I knew what was going on, what was going on was bananas, but that's not a bad thing, my movie is bananas. There's lots to like here, it's nuts in a lot of ways and in the right ways. While the bizarre versions for Jurassic Park 4 may have been difficult for studio executives to wrap their heads around, the more familiar Jurassic World likely had an easier time clicking with people and by proxy getting in production. Whatever the reason, Jurassic Park 4 would eventually see the light of day as Jurassic World and rack up box office bucks in the process. Nobody at Universal is complaining about a series that keeps on churning about 1 million plus hits, but diehard fans of the series may always be more than a touch curious about what those earlier versions of Jurassic World would have looked like. After all, who doesn't want to see a movie starring gun-toting dinosaurs? But whatever the thought process is, would you want to have seen this movie being made? Please let me know in the comments below. I read every comment and I reply to nearly every single comment. And I'd like to thank my YouTube members as always for supporting this video. Thank you very very much guys and we're also launching a brand new Five Nights at Freddy's theory channel and if you like that please head on over and subscribe our first video will be released this week as always thank you very much for watching and go check out all my other videos on the channel I'm Shadows and I'll see you in the next one cheers now bye bye